Welcome to the third in our series of daily devotions for Easter week. And today we're going to consider the events that took place on the road to Emmaus, as recorded in chapter 24 of Luke's Gospel. Luke tells us Emmaus is about seven miles from Jerusalem, so the journey would have taken a good couple of hours, probably longer in the afternoon heat. We know that one of the disciples was called Cleopas, and the speculation that he was accompanied by his wife. Whoever his travelling companion was, they were deep in conversation about the events of the previous few days in Jerusalem as Jesus comes alongside and starts to walk with them, although they're prevented from recognising him. Jesus asks what they're talking about and Cleopas expresses surprise that anyone could have come from Jerusalem and yet not know about the events of the previous days, for the news about Jesus was the topic of conversation. In response to Jesus' question, Cleopas gives a wonderfully succinct summary of the Gospel message in just six verses, and I encourage you to read verses 19 to 24 to see how the truth about Jesus can be expressed in very few words. Despite the news of the empty tomb, some of our women amazed us, Cleopas says. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body, but had seen a vision of angels who told them he was alive. Cleopas and his companion had quite literally turned their backs on Jerusalem, and with it the support and fellowship of the disciples there, and were heading dejectedly for home. This side of heaven will never know why they chose to leave Jerusalem so quickly. Maybe they felt it was all over, that there was no point in staying around any longer, or that Jerusalem was too dangerous a place to be. Whatever their motive for leaving so quickly, in doing so they turned their back on Jerusalem and on the help and support and fellowship that was to be found amongst the other disciples. Meeting together with other Christians wherever and whenever we can, and especially when times are tough, is vital to help support and encourage one another. Without that support and encouragement, we can become lonely, isolated and vulnerable to Satan's attacks. Just as a lion, when out hunting, will pick off an animal that gets separated from the flock or herd, so Satan loves to pick off Christians who become separated from the body of believers. And this is a real challenge for us all whilst we're unable to meet together for worship, prayer, fellowship or home group due to the current COVID-19 restrictions. Now, more than ever before, we need to seek ways to find encouragement and support from our fellow believers to help us to stand firm, to avoid us becoming preoccupied with the present difficulties and missing out on the joy of meeting together around God's word. Although not the same as meeting together face to face, we're able to share in virtual church or prayer meetings, and can I really encourage you to give thanks for both the technology and those who facilitate the services and other events that are happening each week. We also need to pray the services being broadcast online each week during the current period will reach and speak to those who, a bit like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, have, for whatever reason, turned their back on the fellowship of believers, or who are, perhaps, seeking to find meaning amongst all the confusion of current events and who find it much easier to listen to a service on the internet than to walk into a church. Back, though, to that dusty road in Palestine. As they continue to walk in the heat of the first Easter Sunday afternoon, Jesus explains to Cleopas and his companion how the scriptures, all the way back to Moses and the prophets, point inexorably to his coming and the events that were to happen, culminating in his death and resurrection. Popular expectation at the time of the coming Messiah was of a mighty king, who'd free God's people from their hated Roman oppressors. The reality, though, was entirely different. But as Jesus died on the cross, exactly as the scriptures foretold, he won for us a far greater freedom, freedom from the tyranny of sin. That evidence in the scriptures is still there for us today, and it's why it's so vital that we study both the Old and the New Testaments, for it's it's the Old Testament that provides the foundations for our New Testament faith. So although we regularly study the Old Testament in church, if you aren't in the habit of reading from the Old Testament at home, can I really encourage you to do so? For as we do, we discover even more of the length and breadth of God's love for us and his plan of salvation, which stretches back to the beginning of recorded history. Eventually the travellers reach their destination and Jesus, his identity still hidden, makes to go on. Being nearly evening, they they urge him to stay with them, and as they sit down to eat, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and as he did so, they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. 
They immediately rush back to Jerusalem, a hazardous journey as night would have fallen long before they reached there, and find the eleven disciples and those with them who were similarly filled with joy, knowing that the Lord was risen and had appeared to Simon. Once again, out of sadness had come great joy, as they too knew that Jesus was alive again, and they were able to share the good news with the fellowship in Jerusalem. So as we reflect on those thoughts, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that even in the darkest of times you are with us. Comfort and heal all who are in distress at this time, Lord. Be with them in times of darkness as you were with those disciples as they walked along the road to Emmaus. As we try to get used to being unable to meet together to praise and worship you, thank you, Lord, for the technology and those who facilitate its use that allow us to continue to hear your word week by week. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are unable to meet together, not because of fear of a virus, but because of fear of persecution. We pray you'd strengthen and encourage them, and we pray too for all those amongst our own congregation who are struggling at this time. Hasten the day, Lord, we pray, when we can meet together to praise and worship you once again. And Father, we pray for your word as it goes out across the internet that you would draw many to hear to it, to hear it, and to respond to the message in it. 